Hello and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to open your mind, get curious about yourself and connect to the power you hold within. I am your host, Karen Maloney, an inside out coach, helping you to believe in yourself and manifest your desires. Check out the podcast available on all platforms and go to my website, www.karenmaloney.com for all info. Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me again. And this week, before we jump into introducing my guest this week, I am kindly asking you to please leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you enjoy the podcast, if you have got anything from it, if you just like some of the guests or whatever you want to share, if it's a positive experience, I would love if you would share a review. And look, I get it. Sometimes I have the best intentions in the world as well to leave a review and I don't always get around to it. But I would really kindly invite you to make it a priority. Maybe just pause it now, stop it now, open up Apple Podcasts, look for the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast and click the button to leave a review. If you have the app, it should be towards the bottom. And... I'm also offering an incentive as a thank you. And that will be each month I will pick one winner or one name from people who leave a review over that month. And I will do a free 30 minute one to one silent counseling session that will help you to feel lighter, calmer and better. So if you would like to be involved, please go to Apple Podcasts, leave a review and Please feel free to send me a screenshot, email it to support at KarenMaloney.com, a screenshot of the review. I will make a note of them over the month and I will pick a winner every single month, hoping that there are a few of you. So thank you in advance. And then back to this week's episode. And I have Helen Weber joining me. And seven years ago, Helen discovered the power of the emotion code. A dear friend of hers offered her a session to clear a throat issue she was having. And to her surprise, the issue was resolved as a result of the session. She continued working with her on emotional and physical issues and had great success. She believes in the effectiveness and power of the emotion code to heal emotionally and physically. As she dug deeper into the work, she realized she had stored emotions from her past and inherited them from her parents and prior generations. Helen saw that releasing those emotions was helping her heal her physical and emotional symptoms. Her passion for the emotion code was so strong, she knew she had to learn how to do this to help herself her friends and family, and ultimately as many people as she could. So yes, this conversation is centered around the emotion code, which is a healing modality to help release pains, aches, or emotional baggage, whether we are aware of it or not. And Helen shares some of her story. She also explains how these emotions can get trapped in the body, why they're important to release, and how she uses muscle testing and a set of guides to know where to release from in a person's body. Helen also shares a tip on how you can do a sway test yourself to ask your own subconscious questions. So as always, enjoy this conversation. And if you want to connect with Helen, her website is askhelenweber.com and that's W-E-B-B-E-R. But as always, I will have links as well from the show notes on my website, caramaloney.com and click the podcast section. Enjoy. Welcome everybody and thanks for tuning in and joining for another episode. And this week I have Helen Weber joining us. So first of all, you're very welcome, Helen, and thanks for joining today. I'm so honored to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and we've we've had a few uh, overs and backs and meant to record and had to pause again. So hopefully this time we're we're here and we're good to go. And I'm excited to connect and join today. And you're going to be talking about your work and the emotion code. But maybe first of all, if you just give us a little introduction to yourself and what what brought you to this work. Um, what brought me to this work is about seven years ago. Um, I um, was in a group of ladies, and um, 
and we were learning about energy work and a lot of different modalities. Mm-hmm. And I end up coming across a certain issue, and this one girl offered to assist me, and she did the emotion code on me, and she was able to relieve the the issue I was having trouble with, and that intrigued me so much that um, you know I end up reaching out to her and learn a lot about the emotion code, and in the modality, and that's what got me to dive in to learn more mm-hmm. and end up becoming certified. Amazing, and. For maybe for people who haven't heard of the emotion code, what is it exactly? Emotion code is like an energy, it's like an energy is being trapped that has been accumulated over a lifetime and it resonates in the body and it can be emotional or it can be physical and it can be trapped in the body. And often, often it can be referred to emotional baggage or also it can be a physical or a mental issue as well. So it just, it happens when we go through certain traumas in our life, it can be dramatic or very Mm -hmm. subtle and it just depends how our body reacts to it and it all gets stored in the subconscious mind and we're not even aware this is happening or running Mm -hmm. in the background. Uh, A protection mechanism for our body to protect ourselves to help us move forward and continue in life. Mm, yeah. And, you know, you mentioned there as well that it's often, you know, it can present in physical or mental ways, but it's often very subconscious. So how can a person know if they have stuck energy somewhere in their body? And in one sense, does everybody have emotions stuck in some way? Everybody has some emotion stuck in a certain way. I mean, that's just part of life. We all go through different um, different trials and tribulations in life. Some are subtle, some are d- dramatic. And sometimes it can be manifest in a physical state or a mental state or emotional or sometimes even spiritual state. So, you know, if you end up struggling with something or something seems to be hard and then you can't seem to move forward, you, may, you might have something that's holding you back. Or all of a sudden you started having a physical issue and you don't understand why. That could be an issue as well. Um, I have worked with ladies that we were in a group and we all eat, you know, eat in a certain healthy way, but we were still trying to move forward. But it, but I felt like the emotional component is also a key to help that person move forward where they're trying to heal themselves. Sometimes emotion act but prevent that healing to really move forward. So they both work hand in hand. Yeah. And what might be some of the physical, mental or spiritual issues that a person might be experiencing? And like you say, if if they still can't seem to move forward, that there might be an emotional issue there. So what might be some of the the, the manifestations that people might be aware of? The manifestation can be, um, for example, for physical, it be back pain, neck pain, knee pain. Any sort of physical pain can be one aspect. Mental, it could be depression, um, sadness, um, tired, can't get yourself up and moving, or sometimes people carry these certain emotions that they're not good enough or they're a loser, and it could have manifest through ancestors. Sometimes that's running in the background and you don't realize that, and that's holding that person back or something they're trying to do. It seems like they can't seem to move forward. And the spiritual well-being can be maybe someone trying to connect to the your higher self or Heavenly Father or whatever you choose. Some people are trying to connect there, and it seems like there's a big disconnect. Mm. So um, emotion code helps in all those avenues, but it can manifest in so, so many different ways. And sometimes a lot of people don't know it's running or don't know it's holding them back. Yeah. And I think it's really important to talk about because I'm massively into energy and have been for a long time, but often it's not a component that's looked at in well-being or healthcare. You know that, oh, maybe it's not just this physical pain, but there's a bigger energetic or emotional element going on as well. And I think it's really important to to talk about and share as well. And we will delve deeper into how you help people as well. But first of all, I suppose, why does an emotion get trapped in the body? The reason why the emotion get trapped in the body is the way for the body to uh, protect itself because sometimes the emotion can be so intense 
that it in order the way the body can process it, it will store in a certain part of the body. It can be in the stomach, in the liver, the leg, or the heart, or anywhere is a mechanism to protect itself. Because your body is able to process so much, and then when it gets past its capacity, then it stores it. Yeah. And is it necessary for people to always look at that emotional piece as well? Or could someone spend their life avoiding it or ignoring it or not releasing any of that trapped emotion? Well, um, that's a very good question. A lot of people are running around with, you know, everybody has trapped emotion or heart walls or certain issues. A lot of people are not aware of it or not educated. There's other avenues to help support them to able to release that. So um, some people say it's just a normal um, occurrence of life, and we just try to deal with it the best way we can. And a lot of people do meditation or prayer or exercise or whatever. It would help them to move forward to cope with that. And that is very supportive in all aspects of life. But um, emotion code is definitely a different, a different way of looking at our body because it's is made of energy. It's ninety nine point nine nine percent of just pure energy, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, our body is energetic as well, and it hosts so much. It hosts a lot of things that we're not aware of. Yeah. We are all energy and yes, there is so much we're not aware of, but that's why it's so interesting for me as well anyway to have these conversations. And how exactly then does the emotion code work when you're working with people? And I don't know if it's something that you can share or do a demo as well, or you need to be physically with the person, but how how do how does it work? Um, first of all, um I can do it physically with the person, and I also can do it posse. And what I mean by posse, I can do it over the phone, or I can do it energetic, long distance. You know, energy has no distance. And you can do it anywhere, which mm-hmm. is pretty phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times um, I work with clients over the phone, and it's pretty powerful. But what's pretty amazing how it works is how I normally do it, usually um, – you know, a couple of days before the section, I will ask them what is bothering them, what's their concern. And I try to get them to kind of just write up what they're going through. So I kind of know what they're going through with life and their thought process and what their goals are. And as I um, do the section, I do a mental test. Like, for example, I have back aches and I have, you know, I'm having trouble speaking or my voice is not as clear. Or for example, there's certain these goals, I do a muscle test and I pick one of those goals to start first. So maybe mm-hmm. when I do the muscle test, it's telling me to do the physical pain first. And then I work on that. I ask, you know, what, how the pain feel, what the rating is. Is it one to 10? You know, it, are you able to walk or is it, you know, I ask a lot of different questions and be, try to be very, very specific exactly what type that pain is. And then um, I always say a prayer to ask for angels and guides to help me to start the session. And then the motion code is in a chart where you have an A column and a B column. Mm-hmm. And I do metal tests and it even even an odd numbers, the four charts on both mm-hmm. sides. So I go like A or B and it's even odd. And then I break it down. If it's odd, I go one, three, or five, and then I just break it down from there. And then I ask, what is the age group is? You know, is it from birth or from, you know, from, you know, 10 or 20, 30, and I figure out the age group. And if it's 35, and then I ask Mr. May, I release it. And I, if I can, then I release it. And I, um, I do a swipe through the government meridian from the forehead to the back of the neck. And I do three swipes on a regular motion. But if I do inherited, inherited where it's not giving me an answer so I know it's inherited and then how I release that I would do 10 swipes to release the heritage and it can go back pretty far back and but it's pretty powerful because we're helping all those ancestors you know her ancestor or his ancestors Mm -hmm. and it's going to move forward to help people from this time forward to really help all those people which is pretty amazing and a lot of time when I work with a client and she or he is still seeing some improvement, 
But sometimes I will ask certain questions or I'll hear a certain conversation and I go, wait a minute, what did you say? Mm. And then I go, oh, let's dive into that. And then I get more information and get more in-depth what that trap emotion could be. Because a lot of times they might, you know, tell what they're worried about, what, they, uh, what their problems are. But what helps me is what happened or whether any drama or anything mm-hmm. that that might have triggered the manifestation of that pain or the heartache or anything that's going on in their life. And um, that had that has been very, very helpful to really target that motion to be able to release it. And that is pretty powerful. That's amazing. And, you know, it's the importance of what you said as well. Sometimes we don't always need to know what it is or do we? And, you know, like that, if something shows up, you can delve deeper to to clear it. But it's it's for me anyway, it's more the emotional energetic process as opposed to the mental process of getting the mind involved to be like, what was this? When was it? Who was it? You know, is that necessary or it's just purely working with the, the energetics? For example, if someone is uncomfortable to tell me what happened mm-hmm. and they say I'm uncomfortable, go, that's fine. Yeah. Least they acknowledge it and at least I know that. So energetically. I know where to go energetically. And then I go, okay, since this person's uncomfortable, we're going to target in that area. You know what it is. Please mm-hmm. help me. And we're going to work together to relieve those emotions or trap emotion, and then move on. Because it already knows. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to know if that person is uncomfortable. Yeah. So that is, um, that is a very good um, question. But um, but a lot of time they are comfortable to tell me. But if they're not, I still can work with them and yeah. move forward from that. Yeah, that's something that I love often about energy work in that, that, you know, if a person is not ready, maybe at that point to speak, that's OK as well. There's still so much that can be done to support them. And when you mentioned that you do the the swipes and governing Meridian, do you work just with mainly govern Meridian or do you work with all the Meridians as well in the body? Through the emotion code, I mean. Well, um, the reason, okay, I need to clarify. When I release the trap emotion or the heart wall, I do the swipe to release it. And that's the only area that I work on. I don't do any other parts of the body. Mm-hmm. But um, the emotion code, it, it breaks down to like row one, two, through six. It breaks down certain parts of the body. Like row one would be the heart or the small intestine. And row two would be the spleen and the stomach. And row three, like the lungs and colon. So it does break down certain parts of the body mm-hmm. as I release these certain trap emotion. But on the meridian, no. I just do the govern, governing meridian just to release that trap of emotion or inherited emotion. Mm. And I know you've mentioned the heart wall a couple of times as well. And what is that? A heart wall is... Um, you know how when they do the EKG and they monitor how your heart is and your heart has a certain energy of what it can project? Um, your heart has like a field. And so when you have a heart well, it has a field. It's a mechanism. It protects your heart. You know how sometimes you feel like you have a broken heart? When you go through it's a heartache or trauma or whatever, it's very dramatic. Your heart protects itself by throwing the energy in the heart, protect it from becoming a broken heart and that and it builds up and it gets to the point sometimes your heart is not open because you have blocked it because you're trying to protect yourself emotionally and you know I think some of us would probably recognize that like if you know certain people or a certain aspect of life it's just not very supportive and it's the way you protect yourself you're very numb or very shut off and that is another way for the heart to protect itself because it's blocked. You feel no emotion towards that situation or towards that person because you've been hurt or been upset or had a lot of trauma in that certain situation. So um, and our heart wall is, you know, you ought to try it sometime, you know, just stand up and you can do the sway test. What I mean by the sway test, you stand up and if you say yes, you know, have your hand to your side, stand straight up and say, yes, you'll move forward. If you say no, you'll move back. What's interesting is you put your hand in front of your heart and just stand there and keep moving out. 
And he asked, what is the length of my heart wall? And you just keep moving out and eventually it will move forward and you'll know the length of the heart wall. It's just the energetic protection of your heart. And it's pretty phenomenal. We don't realize we have that mechanism to protect our heart. And the benefit to release that heart wall is to able to open up for love, to receive manifestation, a lot of potential in our life. And sometimes when we have two months closed off, those things, we have a hard time receiving those things. Yeah, I think many people can certainly relate to that idea and maybe they may not have the language heart wall but that idea of protecting ourselves and shutting down and I I know for sure that was me and I definitely was more shut down and shut off and numb because when someone does get hurt I think logically we think oh it's better to shut down it's better not to let anything in because this way I'm protecting myself but actually it's it's more I don't want to say damaging but it's it's not the the way to protect ourselves and really healing is about cracking open our heart to life to everything and building boundaries to support ourselves as well and through the emotion code as well how do you help someone to maybe open up or strengthen that heart wall again to allow in the the good i um i have um it was pretty profound it helped that person to able to not have the heart in the heart if that makes any sense um because they, um, they would shut down emotionally and it helped them slowly to able to open up and receive and have a um, fuller potential in life because all, all this is subconscious and you don't realize that it's happening until that heart wall gets released, how much it bogged you down, how much your heart is open. And it's scary to open your heart up. Mm. It's scary because we all know it, it's been we've been hurt so many times but in another act, but it's very freeing and very, um, and it helped you move forward and embrace life and set it um, more of a light heart and set it so heavy and burdened and, and, and like you're carrying so much emotion. It's just nice to be free from that. Mm-hmm. And what's wonderful about emotion code or the heart wall, once that emotion is released, you're going to always, if something comes up, trigger that memory you're going to remember the memory but the emotion attachment to it it's gone Mm -hmm. you're going to remember it but you're going to be able to react a different way because that emotion part is gone which is pretty amazing and that's you know so it's helped you able to deal with it and then okay this has happened and makes you help you deal with whatever situation situation arise you're able to deal with it in a different way and you're able to move forward and gain strength from that. Yeah, I love that. And isn't that what they say that true healing is when we can think back on an event or a situation or whatever it was, and we don't have that emotional charge when we think about it, like you're saying, that means we're free. But that's also a clue for people that there is something still resonating if they do think back on a situation or a memory and it brings up a strong visceral reaction in their body, well, then there's still something there that needs to be released because true healing is being able to, once we release that emotional charge, then you can gain the wisdom, then you can grow often from the experience as well. But it's very difficult when we still have that visceral emotional body reaction in the now to something in the past. So I think it's it's really important as well for for that to to happen and to release that. And is there anything and I don't know if there is, but is there anything practical that you can share with listeners on the call that maybe they can try themselves and I don't mean the muscle testing or anything like that, but is there anything practical that you could share with listeners to maybe even connect to their heart wall or connect to their body or to know if something is there to maybe help shift a little? Is there anything practical that you can share with listeners as well? Well, um Dr. Bradley Nelson came out with a book, The Emotion Code, and he came out with a new revised one, I think a couple years ago. And that book will give you the basic fundamental how the emotion code works. And, you know, and also he would teach you how to, you know, do mental tests if you want to do, or you can just do the sway test. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, as I mentioned earlier, the sway test, you stand up. And um, if you think something positive, forward, negative is back. So that's an um you know another way to do that. But if you're just 
if you like if you are kind of curious well it might have an issue in this area or this area what you could do is um make sure you know um you're grounded like at, you know ask yourself am i grounded and then you'll do a sway test yes or no and then um and then you could ask the question do i have a trap emotion in regard to this issue you can ask yourself in the subconscious but you got to make sure your mind is clear Mm. of all things or any judgment or any emotion and just keep it very neutral, it will give you a yes or a no. But like I mentioned earlier, I think if you check out the book at the library or get it on Amazon or whatever, that will give you a really good basis how to help heal yourself or at least, you know, get started, how to release certain type of emotion. But sometimes um, we can get in our own way, and sometimes mm. it's good to have someone else to release some of that because sometimes the body is not ready or it doesn't feel safe with you, but it'll feel safe with somebody else to release those emotions. Yeah. But I, I years ago when he had the first book, that's how I read it first, and I started doing that, and then I got certified, and um, I learned so much. And be patient with yourself when you learn mm. how to mental test. You know, just be patient. It takes time. But I would start with the sway test. And if you want to learn more, then you can learn to do the muscles, which there's a lot of different um, methods that way as well. But that's just for a starter. Yeah. And it is true. Like when we, because again, it's the truth that we do hold all the answers within, but we're not taught how to be in communication with ourselves. And yes, you know, there's so much we can do for ourselves. It's so important to get support at times as well. But you know, when people are doing the sway test as well, and you're meant to go forward on yes and back on no, what if someone is going the opposite? They're going back on yes and forward on no. Is there a way that you help people as well to to get their energies flowing correctly in the first place so then they get a, a clear read? Or if someone goes the opposite way, what could they do? You know, um, it sounds like their body's doing a reverse polar. So, um a lot of time, if your body is going the opposite, it's a lot of times your your reverse polar could be reversed. But with a person would have to do a section to correct that, and they couldn't mm-hmm. really do that on their own. But the key is, for example, if have someone put two things in a bag, like um, something's not very good for you and something is good for you, put it in a brown paper bag, and and then have someone put that bag in front of you, and you test that sway test. And if I said no and you open it, it's going to surprise you that that whatever is in there is not good for you. It, it's a good, it's a really fun way to try it or like a sweetener or whatever, but I'm not, you know, it's just a good basic just to try something out. To know that you are, you can trust that process. It just put something in the bag that's good, what's not so great, and what's really good for you. Your body will know without you even knowing what's in that bag. Yeah. And you also can do, like, if you're not sure what supplement or cer- certain or certain thing, you can do a sway test to know if this is the right thing for your body or if this is the better thing for your body. Pretty powerful. It can help you anything that's very basic as well than just the most encode and the heart well. Yeah, it is. It's so interesting. And like that, just for people to play and explore even themselves, because like you say, it is a skill. It does take a bit of practice and we do need patience. And, you know, it's something that's interesting, a tool that really can support us throughout our lives as well. And it's something I do as well in silent counseling, which is similar in lots of ways, but different. You know, for me, a lot of the energy work is very same, same, but different. But like that, it is a meridian based therapy that does check different meridians and the emotions associated and where the blockages are and but it is very important as well that someone has their energy running in the the correct way in the first place to be able to get a a clear read and that comes back to what you mentioned earlier as well and being grounded and being clear in your mind and you know there are different points in the body as well to help us but it's it's so it's so interesting and like that I always say with everything it's just being curious about yourself and having fun and playing like just make it fun as opposed to so serious and see where where a person is led if they wish to learn more if they wish to reach out but it's this idea of playing having fun and just being curious and what have you seen as well through your work of the benefits that people have experienced from the emotion code 
I am, I'll share with one client and then I'll share um, on another. Um, I was working with a dear friend. She had trouble with her voice, but she's a beautiful singer and she got the point she couldn't talk very well and she had a hard time singing and she'd been, you know, struggling with it for like two years and then um, she decided to do a section with me and we had to do a couple and then she finally brought up a certain timeline in her life and I go, oh, um, let's, you know, focus on that and see where we get. And it took about, um, some can be quick, some takes longer, it, mm-hmm. and it depends on the body. And I think that with, between fourth and fifth section, we were able to clear the certain energy and she was able to gradually, slowly rega- regain her voice. Mm-hmm. And now she's able to sing again. And it, I was just so happy because it was so hard for her to talk and so much energy just to get words out and my heart just went out for her because that's really hard because for all of it 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 is effortless to talk for her it was so hard so that was that was just one of the key components to help her move forward and it's just been really powerful and the second one as you know i also we also do work on animals mm-hmm. and um my um my client friend had um a beautiful horse that she he's a wild horse but she had issues of feeding her or touching her he would just she was very standoffish and did not trust the owner because the horse had gone through a lot of trauma but still you know and pet the horse is all hard anyway but I would I did a couple sections on her horse and she thanked you me so much because now she's able to, you know, you know, usually when you, you know, come by the horse, you kind of swipe them by the back and down their back. And usually she's very standoffish and very hesitant. Now she's not scared and she was able to get her um, a, her hoof trim and a lot of things that she would not allow anybody to do. Mm-hmm. So um, and she decided to move forward to end up taking this horse on a trail ride because it just because that horse had a lot of been um, walking in certain terrain that it would just be a really wonderful adventure. So it's just so exciting where she said you actually saved this horse life because it was a point where I, I don't know if I could have sold it. I would have had to put it, her to sleep and she didn't want to do that because it was nothing she could do. And for us working together and helping move this beautiful animal forward, she's going to have a full life. And I'm mm-hmm. so happy about that. Oh, yes, that's so amazing. And yes, you know, a lot of these energy modalities as well are safe for animals and that. So that is so, so beautiful. And just something as well that you mentioned there that it can take a couple of sessions. I know when you mentioned earlier, like when the emotion is gone, it's gone. But just to make people aware, no matter what modality, that doesn't mean it may be all gone in one session. It can, but it can often take a couple of sessions as well. Um, So what a wonderful conversation and sharing today Helen and please if there's anything that you feel left to share please do and please also share where people can find out more on your work okay and last thing that you mentioned you know as I mentioned sometime it take a couple sec- section mm-hmm. is when we release this one motion sometimes other mo- motions move forward yeah. until they're ready and it's it's just almost like a sometimes it can be a domino effect once you release one one moves forward yeah. until we get to the core of it and sometimes, like I said, it can take some time or sometimes it can happen very quickly. Yeah. But um, just to kind of clarify that, mm-hmm. um, where you can reach me is my website is at HelenWeber.com. Um, I have a website there and you also um, can find me on Facebook as well. You know, you're welcome to email me or, um, or reach me on Facebook or um, send a message on my website. If you have any questions or not sure or anything, I'm happy to help. Because it's just, um, it's just a wonderful modality to move forward to heal. And it really brings you different acts with the freedom that we thought we could never have. Amazing. And thank you so, so much for joining and sharing today. And as always, I will have links from the show notes on my website to all your links as well. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. 
Thanks for listening. And before you go, I would love to ask you a massive favor. If you enjoyed this episode or any episode of the podcast, I would love for you to leave a short review on Apple Podcasts to help it grow. If you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it.